All right, ladies and gentlemen, we finally got a victory, much needed victory moving into my Liverpool game, much needed victory for my sanity as well. I'm pretty sure for your sanity as well, just needed something to latch onto and really back Graham Potter. Let's talk about this match. All right, all right, all right, here we go back again on the other side of the coin. All right, welcome back to the other side of the coin, ladies and gentlemen. Chelsea won, Crystal Palace nil. Got my boy Ryan in the house. Ryan, much needed victory. And in all honesty, it wasn't a bad performance. Uh, if anything, we probably should have scored more. Um, Palace obviously had their chances as well, chances as well where kept us, kept us in. But Mudrick in the house at Stamford Bridge, seeing his team get a victory after twerking for Arsenal all along. Um, hopefully this is a kickstart, Ryan, for you moving against Liverpool coming up next and maybe for the rest of the season. No, I think tactically we've been really well today. Um, mm. I said, you know, I watch along that even when we were quote-unquote struggling half-time, I said it's not tactically that Potter's getting wrong this game. It was more up to the players to close in faster when they're numerically matched or take advantage of their you know opportunities and i think that from standout performances both in defense and um an attack we dealt with opportunities from the other side well and we created opportunities in the attacking end from good quality players so I, i'm mm. really i'm really pleased with this Obviously, three points is massive. Mm. There's many ways to get at three points, but with our current form, I think from a performance point of view, I would take this as a best case scenario to get three points. And and as you've said as well in the watch along and previously as well many times, it's not about the pretty football at the moment. It's about getting the wins. And this is what I've said recently as well. It's about getting the wins. Just giving the fans the belief that you're the right guy, Potter. You're the right guy, and we, we will we will back you. We'll back you. It was so important to get that victory. Really wanted that victory against Fulham, um, and hopefully, hopefully, it's it's all about as you said, Ryan. It's all about let's just get the wins. Let's just pick up the three points, and we got all these superstars. You know, in the likes of Mudrik, who's been unveiled today at the stadium. Xia Felix, a couple of more matches left till he comes back as well. So our owners are doing level best to ensure Chelsea Football Club gets back to the top. It's just about, for the time being, get the three points. And, and come summer, maybe we can get rid of many players that are not wanted by the football club. And then maybe next season, we can slowly start looking at philosophy style and all of that i mean th this is where you've been driving as well you know in terms of what you want from chelsea i mean is this is this what the mentality should be i suppose going forward for for the remainder of this season yeah i mean i think that from the context of this match we could have gone there and uh christopher could have played horribly and we mm. could have went four nil and we could have this false positivity that we are turning things around. But I kind mm. of much rather this win because Crystal Palace did really well in many phases of the game. True. And we had a hard fought victory filled with personality and many moments of quality from goalkeeper to body shield and Thiago Silva in defense to Kanye mm. and Ziyech in attack. Like there's moments in each third of the game from our players that we really dug in, show quality and personality. And that's why I think we need to show more of that um, coming forward. And mm -hmm. we need to find ways to win with what we have. Um, with what we have is different coming in the coming next two weeks than now because we have Modric, Felix will be coming back. And who knows, before the end of the window, we might get a midfielder and a right back. So yeah. let's see what we can do. I always say that we need to, well, I always say to myself because I don't be on videos, but um, <laughs> I always say that we need to give Potter time um, with the new players. And I agree that Potter could do better 
with our current crop of players, they are not 10th place players. Maybe they are 6th place players or 7th. Yeah. But let's see with the new signings what he can do. I'll take this as a positive sign today and have my eyes and heart open for the next game. 100% agreed, man. 100% agreed. It's good. I needed the victory. I really needed the victory. And we've got that. Hopefully we can take this forward. And as you said, new players coming in really want to see how Potter does with them. He deserves to at least see what he what he's able to do with them. Let's talk about this particular match. Ryan, I don't know how much Chelsea news you've been watching uh, over the last 24 hours. Matt Law has obviously been doing a lot of madness again, talking about player power. And he's been throwing in the name Havertz. Pulisic and also Hakim Ziyech and I've said in my you know consequent video off the back of those articles that player power like Hakim Ziyech like Christian Pulisic uh, Kai Havertz like these guys don't have any power they have zero power and then what sort of influence would they really have with the playing group like zero I, I would have to say because they're not some of the strongest mentalities in the in the in the club and, and off the back of that, you know, the player power tag given to Hakim Ziyech, he drops, in my opinion, a man of the match performance. Should have had two assists, looked very threatening in attack. Um, I've said in recent times that I don't know whether Potter really, really trusts him, really rates him, because he doesn't tend to get the regular minutes. Um, I hope off the back of this, he's one of the first one starters against Liverpool where do you stand with Hakim Sish? obviously obviously we can Mudrik we've already got Mudrik in and Xavi Felix is in and down the track maybe players like Sish need to move on but for the time being in this window do you get rid of Sish? and if not do you regularly start him listen I would say that this window I'll get rid of nobody because with injuries, unpredictable. We're 10th place, 9th place, 5th or 8th place. We need to keep on to everybody. I think that Ziyech has a lot to offer from a creativity point of view. Um, I think that how he played for Morocco was a great example of how you could possibly use him, like a Neymar. Mm. Obviously not 1v1 ability like Neymar, but positionally and tactically how Neymar is used as kind of like a, a left winger who drops into central midfield and wide midfield to create yep. to contribute from a creative point of view. And with goals, I think Ziyech could do that. Especially now you have players around him who could take on players 1v1, Modric, mm. Felix, mm. soon to be Nkunku on top. You have players around Ziyech, that quality that could allow him to play and do what he does best. Impact the game with passing, creating chances, crosses, shots and goals. I think he's a player that you you could get three more years out of Ziyech at a top level if you use him the correct way. If you're going to use him as a 1v1 winger, sell. Sell. Because <laughs> he, he just wouldn't. Yes, he would play good crosses from wide areas, etc. Mm. Yes, he could dribble really well. But from a PS point of view, no. So, yeah. it, I would say sell or keeps the edge is all dependent on how the manager intends to use him. Yeah, agreed, agreed. Badia Shile is really, really stepped up in this game. First time, really and he, he was very, very good. Defensively rock solid with the ball. Very good as well. Didn't let really anyone good. go past him. Koulibaly's spot. Ryan, bit iffy. I always say to myself because, <laughs> but big players have big responses. And yeah. I want to see how cool about the response. The best players in the world, when they are out of the 11, they come back into the 11 with a big message to the manager, mm. to, the, to themselves, and to the teammates. I believe in Kulabali still. I think he's a high quality defender. He's shown to be one of the best defenders in the world for the past five years. Yeah, I'm not going to give up and say sell Koulibaly after a couple of difficult months when our team is 10th. Mm, mm. So I would not give up on him, but I would say it's good to have competition to give him a push forward yeah. in a motivating way, but also in a less intense way where you could take that pressure off of him. 
if he needs to ride the wave and get back on on route, so be it. Hundred percent, I agree. I think you could look at it two ways. One where he could get rattled and feel, oh man, I don't really like this. I'm benched. Or he could look at it as a sense that you know what, complacency has kicked in. Really need to think about what I'm doing and focus to come back out uh, in in the starting lineup. Absolutely, and healthy competition breeds for good performances hopefully carney chuka maker right this guy he's 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 special as you said in the watch along he's special and every special. single minutes he's getting whether it's off the bench whether today he starts he's he's got it all man he's got the mm. pace he's got the power he's got the technical ability he's got that hunger to play aggressive football where, you know, he's looking for threatening passes up front. Um, I feel like he can play in midfield. He can play out wide. He's he's young. He's 18, 19 player, or something like that. Man could probably even play wing back for, you know. <laughs> probably. He could probably do all of that. I mean, Ryan, this guy, we do need to now slowly see. A lot more of. I, I know a lot of people have been saying this. It's because he's not playing enough um, because he's been injured. He's young. Don't want to get another player injured. Very young. No problems. Manage his time. But he's looking good, man. He's That's looking okay. very good. No, miss. I always say with young players, first, first, your foot in the door must be a raw materials. Mm. Raw materials, as in. What is the primary attribute in your position? That is 1v1 ability, physicality, mm. um, technical ability. These things is your primary attribute. Mm. But how you use your raw materials dictates your end product, right? Correct. So it's like you need sugar to use it to make a cake, right? You <laughs> can use a bunch of black pepper. <laughs> Some of these wingers we have have black pepper and we're trying to make cake. Oh, you can make crab cake, but you can't make cake for dessert, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What I say with sugar maker is he has the sugar, he has the flour, he has the raw materials. And Let's I make would cake, give bro. a 19-year-old or 20-year-old time. I would give them one to two years to say, okay, bit by bit, develop that end product mm. with the raw materials you have, with the ingredients you have. Mm. What surprised me with sugar maker is that already I could see that this guy has better end product than many of our more senior players yeah players who get been given three four years at chelsea right mm. and i think that this that is special because not many players his age he might be under the radar not in the spotlight right now mm. in world football or in english football or even chelsea football but let me tell you this guy has it it I don't want to mm. overrate him i don't want to put too much pressure on him i would say the trajectory is going on with the amount of pressure he's on is perfect for him you do what you could do with no pressure on you. I think he'll be a fantastic player for us. And it goes to show that ball here, yeah, those guys, yes, they splash the money on who they want, Modric, Fofana, etc. Mm. But Badi Ashili, if he keeps up this, Kani, if he keeps up this, that could shoot. And then we'll see more of um, the Fofana striker. Mm. If he could get into a groove, get more games, start playing, that's three wonderful recruitment there for cheap prices. I mm. mean, I would say props, props. So let's see. Let's see, man. So far, yeah, those players, if they turn out well, I think we can definitely say, okay, maybe maybe we might have been a bit too harsh on the recruitment team and maybe they had something that they were looking at. Um, I'm just going to quickly go through a couple of players and then I want to leave one player right at the end to wrap things up. Kai Havertz obviously gets himself the goal. Should have had a hat trick. Overall, I don't think he had the bestest performance, if in my opinion. A uh, few things he did well. Obviously, really done well to lash on that header. But should have had another header for, from Ziyech's cross in the first half. And there was another header for Mount effort as well. Um, and overall, few few decision makings went great. Uh, obviously, as I said, gets the winner. So I really, really thank you for that. Kepa, um, really kept us in. Really kept us in. Kai. Yeah, go on, bro. It's very odd to me because Kai is a midfielder and attacking midfielder, so whatever you want to call him. And he mm. now he plays as a false nine. 
at the beginning, you would expect a false nine, the primary suitors to operate within the pockets and flourish within the pockets and then get into the box to contribute as a striker mm. for the other half of the game, right? Yep. The thing is, it's quite the opposite of Kai. I think recently that Kai does well more when he runs in behind. Mm. Like mm. his movement as a striker is really, really good. I would say that he's in the right place at the right time. He gets plenty of chances in the aerially and running in behind. So both ways he's doing really good striker's instinct positionally. Mm. Finishing doesn't match his movement, unfortunately. Um, I think that he misses a lot of chances that a top striker wouldn't. Mm. But it's really odd to me that um, a person who's been a midfielder for so long, it's when he drops in the pockets. It's when he, he does, does the worst. Worse, exactly, exactly. Back Strength. toward goal or front toward goal doesn't matter. He just doesn't have an impact on the game. Even if he's mm. not bullied, he just shies away from any responsibility in the pockets. And no matter if you're six foot eight or five foot ten, all strikers in modern football when the need to drop any pockets and impact the game. Don't care who you are. Yeah. Hundred uh, percent. It's so odd that Kai is doing the things that we expect him to take, like the things we expect Kai to take time with, which is striker's movement and instinct. He's doing mm. that so good now. But the things we expect him to be good at, he isn't doing good. Yeah, and 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 you're right. Like he gets into these positions where he can have a header or he can have a uh, you know a tapping opportunity or whatever the case is. So you're right. His movement as a striker is probably very good, and things that we tend to believe he should be good at where, okay, he's not really a striker, should be a central attacking midfielder, tucks in into midfield, into those pockets of spaces. As you said, he does not seem to have the control. He I mean, does not Felix have the in control. pockets compared to Havertz. Oh, it's night and night day. Night and day. Night it's and not day. even evening and night. It's night and day. <laughs> it's night and day. <laughs> it's night and day. Um, Kepa, <laughs> for me, was very good. A couple of last games, not good enough. And today, kept us in in the first half. Definitely kept us in Great in the save. second half. Great saves. A couple of really, really good saves. Um, to wrap this up, ladies and gentlemen, we want to talk about Mason Mount. I mean, Ryan, with all these superstars that are coming through, um, Modric, obviously, as I keep saying, unveiled as a Chelsea player. Great, great touch as well. I'm really liking how this ownership... Uh, they're trying to change things up, you know. Last time I saw a player being unveiled, you know, in the stadium like this at halftime, I don't even remember, to be honest. I don't even think there has been a case like this. So it's good to see the new owners are doing... That does a lot for players to earn their confidence. Huge, huge. I think it's that American style, you know, bring them in front to the stadium. I think I think, I think, think uh, Man United has done recently with a with few of their players where they've unveiled them in front of the entire Old Trafford. So um, it's good to see that. So it's good to unveil players like that. As Ryan said, it's good for the confidence. Fans get to celebrate you as well. You know, give you a round of applause. Obviously, Jao Felix in, on loan and potentially could be a permanent. Obviously, we've got an Nkunku next season. And potentially there's a few more signings to happen this season. The way Mount has been playing, he's he's making crosses when there's no crosses evident. Yeah, okay, there was one in the second half where he put on the plate for Havertz, but there's been plenty of this match where it's just been rubbish. He takes shots when there's no shot at all on. He doesn't pass when there is a pass on. He passes when there is no pass on. Ron, you've said this before. <laughs> Hard conversations, uncomfortable conversations are probably going to come for Chelsea Football Club when you see some of your players I called not it. being part. You called it. You called it. And I think we're getting into that level where I would I be got surprised. Cooked. You got cooked. You got cooked. I, I would honestly be surprised with all these players once they're available for Grand Potter, how Mason Mount starts. Honestly, listen, I think that there's potential there. The thing is now, before, okay, so while I was mad with Mason is, right, there was things that 
he reach a certain ceiling as an inside forward where he can move anymore. Mm-hmm. His ball retention, his pockets was awful. His position making under pressure was awful. No, no decision making on the in the pockets under pressure was awful. Mm-hmm. And I thought that he really should see him because he just wasn't improved. And I was questioning, does he even have it in the pocket? Is this the guy? <laughs> but it seems as if now he's regressing because it's added on to where he thinks that he used to do well. He's not doing well anymore. Mm-hmm. You understand? Yeah. It's like, even with space and time, the passes he should be making, the shots he should be making, the decisions he should be making. He isn't doing well. I don't think he's re- regressing from a quality point of view because I believe the quality there. I think from a mental focus point of view, it's not there. Just mm. throwing away possession, throwing away chances. You have seconds in the ball. And some players won't do that purposely. I don't think he purposely is slacking off. But I just think that when you're playing game after game after game, you're not getting corrected for what you're not doing well. You're not paying the consequences. You'll take time for granted on the field. Yeah. Naturally. All humans do. And I think that's what's happening. I don't think it's a lack of quality. I think it's lack of what he does with that quality. Yeah. Hundred percent agree. And as we've said previously, some time away from the starting lineup and just coming from the bench, showing that hunger again, that desire, maybe just may just do well, might just kick start his you know his his perception of what he really needs to do for Chelsea Football Club so let's see ladies and gentlemen we're going to wrap things up look fantastic match uh, in terms of the result uh, for us we haven't won uh, for a little while and, and it's Liverpool good to get that next, yeah. we've got Liverpool next and we're in level points with Liverpool and field let's let's get that victory let's slowly start building that momentum i fully expect modric to start in that particular match really take the game on uh, yeah. to liverpool a um, win into that in- international break is what we need bro that confidence would give and two weeks on the pitch just to get your tactics right refresh 100 we need that win bro need that both win. teams need that win both teams need that win. it's break. it's actually gonna be a blockbuster it's really a mid off it's yeah, a mid table yeah. off. It's it's a it's a mid off. It's a mid off. Conference league off. It's it's a mid table proper crunch match, and we need it badly. Um, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, hope you guys have enjoyed this. Smash that like button if you're here for the first time. Subscribe. Hit the bell notification. Follow Ryan on Twitter. Um, I'll leave the uh, at in the in the description, and yeah, celebrate the win for the time being, and we move on to Liverpool. Bram Potter. This is all I needed. Just just pick up the victories, man. I don't need anything fancy. I don't need anything glamorous. Just pick up the wins and wait for these superstars to come back. And hopefully uh, we can we can go on a roll. Until next time, everyone. Take care and see ya. <laughs>